let's move on to look at some tooth resorption cases. This is a tooth resorption, that redness, red gums, those red lesions on, on the tooth. They can be more subtle also. They can be below the surface and all you see is this little reddish hue here. Uh, tooth resorption actually starts from within. So the dentine below that in, uh, enamel would get weakened and then at some point that's all, it will implode and there's suddenly going to be a hole here. So, so this is why sometimes you can see the tooth resorption uh, right below the surface and it's just about to happen. I would extract a tooth like this because when are we going to see this cat back? In three months? Nah, I don't think so. Probably more like one year uh, or two years or five years. And uh, you can be pretty sure that this has t turned into um, a full-blown tooth resorption in maybe in less than a few months from now. This is what it looks like in a skull. Very nice. Um, uh, image of what tooth resorption does to uh, to a tooth. Okay, so there are three types of uh, tooth resorption. There's type one, where the periodontal ligament and pulp is still visible, and you can see the ligament here, and the pulp is right here in the middle. Here, so. When you see, and you see this dark area here, this is the tooth resorption with intact roots, then you have to do a full extraction. You cannot leave uh, periodontal ligament space behind. You cannot leave any pulp remnant uh, behind. So the days where the, there was a saying, if you have tooth resorption, we can just do crown amputation. And then suddenly people thought, oh, that's so easy. We can... Every time there's a tooth resorption, we can just crown amputate it. But that's not true. It has to be the correct type of tooth resorption. So when you see, when you can recognize, here's a root, here's a root, then you, you cannot just crown amputate. You have to extract. These are, are those resorption lesions. And sometimes you have to look very closely. This is just below the gum line. And I'm using my Explorer to walk all the way around the circumference of a tooth to feel for any uh, tooth resorptions. So this is what, what I do and what I want you guys to do when you check for tooth resorption. Take the, this uh, is called a pig tail explorer. So it's a little bit bent and very sharp. So I want you to walk, run this like here. At the neck area of the tooth and see here I'm catching something and hear that sound okay so this is a this is a very subtle tooth resorption and when once that tooth resorption breaks into the open and you can feel it clinically you have to extract that tooth even though it looks completely normal it's not a normal tooth Okay, here are some more examples of type 1 tooth resorption where you see a lot of destruction of the crowns, but you can still see the periodontal ligament here and here, and you can see that black line, which is the pulp chamber or the, the pulp canal. You can still see those, so you have to get it out. Here there's a PD3, as we learned. And here, there's a lot of resorption here, but there are intact roots. You can see that periodontal ligament space, so you have to extract, like I did here. And resorptions are very painful, so you have to do something about it. This is another case, and these are not easy. Oh my god, if you don't have loops, dental loops, a good light, some very small burrs, I would refer these cases to someone who has that equipment because sitting there with suboptimal position, you don't, you cannot see what you're doing. Your instruments are not small and not sharp enough. And if you feel very frustrated by this, you don't have to feel pressured that you have to do this. There, it's not your fault. So you can you can refer to someone else that have more training and have more equipment because this is definitely not going to be easy because you can be 100% sure 
and when you try to extract this tooth it's going to break right here and you have to you have to deal with this root tip you have to be able to go down there and see it and get it out okay so you have to feel comfortable before you go into something like this it's not a failure to to say this is not for me i'm going to refer i, I wish more people did that because we will have less root tips in the medibular canal and so on so um, this is another severe case with a lot of destruction on the crowns, but you can still see that periodontal ligament here and here and here and here and here. So you have to get everything out. If you don't get it out, they will, the roots will not resorb. A, a root left behind will never resorb by its own. So, so it will 50% uh, of roots left behind will cause inflammation and it will um, it will cause inflammation and um, oh, I was just looking here because it seems like my audio just um, went out let me know if there's a problem with the audio and um, okay just let me know okay uh, let me just check which audio I'm I'm using uh, microphone okay so it's not the good microphone but it works all right this is another case of type 1 tooth absorption you can still see that intact period on the ligament space here you have to get those root tips out also here and the reason the crowns broke off is because there were resorption in it these are some root tips from incisors and you can still see those outlines of the roots so you have to go in and, and get them out this is what it looks like sometimes clinically and you can see there are some redness here and this means that these broken root tips are inflamed okay and there's even a little fistula here and some dark red areas so there's an inflammation down here that's why we need to to get it out obviously this is very bad also here beginning this is the buccal bone expansion alveolar bone expansion so these teeth are going to be extracted also okay this one is the easy one <laughs> this is the type 2 this is the kind that you can do a crown amputation on so a type 2 is also called replacement resorption because the roots are getting replaced by bone okay so you cannot see the periodontal ligament space anymore and you cannot see the pulp canal here anymore. So the treatment for these is crown amputation, or I would call it partial extraction. That means that you, you, you don't just uh, drill over here. You actually dig a little deeper and take some of these inflamed areas out. You can do that with your uh, football diamond burr. This is what it looks, it may look like clinically. Um, just some redness around that crown. And on the x-ray, you can see two normal teeth here, one that is completely abnormal. This is um, type 2 tooth resorption of the canine tooth. And usually it always starts at the root here and it works its way up towards the crown. And once, it, as long as it's down here, it's not causing any pain or any problems. Once it hits the crown, and you can feel it with the Explorer, like I showed you on the video, and you can get a hint here that there might be a defect here, then you have to get rid of this inflamed part here. So I did a crown amputation, and this is the surface of that tooth. And at some point, you cannot really see what's tooth, what's bone, and now then you know you have uh, uh, removed enough. So the amputation is basically just taking a diamond burr. I would not use a round um, steel burr because it's a little bit too aggressive, especially if you hit the soft tissue, it will damage it. Just use a coarse grit, diamond burr, football burr, round diamond burr, and, and uh, remove this uh, part here. This is a normal canine tooth with the periodontal ligament space intact all the way around here. This is when you are starting to see beginning signs of type 2 tooth absorption. Once you see this, it's not a, a distinctive line anymore. It gets a little bit blurry. That's when you say, okay, we may need to uh, monitor 
this um, this tooth. I'm going to see if I have. OK, so there are some questions. I'll look at those after. This is the beginning. Now it gets a little bit more advanced. See, it gets more turned turn more into bone, so to speak. But the crown is still intact, still normal. You don't have to do anything right now because it's not painful. It's not causing any problems. Okay, so here it gets a little bit more severe. Now you cannot really see that root tip anymore. But the ligament space is gone and the pulp uh, canal is gone. This one is still normal. Now it hit the crown, see? Now I hit the crown. So now you have to do something. Now you have to extract. And I would remove maybe down to here. I don't like these black areas. This is signs of inflammation. So I would, and I don't really like this line, the pulp canal, but this has turned so much into bone. This has been so vastly replaced that it will, the progress will continue and it will eliminate that canals. I'm not too worried about that. I would crown amputate down to this level and use your x-ray to as a guide. This is another example where you can see the you cannot really see the roots anymore, right? So this is definitely a type 2 replacement resorption and we can just crown amputate here and this is what I did crown amputate. Type 3 is just a combination of type 1 and 2. So in type 3, you have one tooth where you can crown amputate this part and you have to extract this part fully. So 